I had pretty much decided when I was 12 that I was marrying Chauncey. <laughs> I knew that Kelly was the one. Kelly is just a person of integrity. She's the, the type of person that you can always count on, you can always trust. Hi. Thank you. Good. One of the things that I love about skiing with my family is the time on the, on the lift because it's time that's undistracted. We always kind of had this quote, families that play together stay together. Every run is a new challenge for myself. I think that having such a core thing that we both loved to do and then learning to do it together and being there for each other to do it together, it definitely, I think, helped with how strong our foundation is with our marriage. So we had Elise, our first. Elise was always um, looking out for her younger siblings. Are you getting tired, reindeer? She was very self-confident, very determined, and, and wanted to try everything. <laughs> she just absolutely loved being outside with us. I'll help. <laughs> She was able to ski uh, just about any run at any mountain that we took her to. You can do it. So Christmas Eve, I can remember feeling just that happy inside, just that joy that I was up there with my family. Got all of our gear ready and skied a little bit on the bunny slope and then Kelly and I split up and I took Elise skiing with me. And she had wanted to take one of the more difficult runs. And I, I told her, wait and, and, and go show mom how well you're doing. Good job. Show me how you can stop. I remember starting that run with her. Keep coming, good girl. She was following me and she went over and got tangled up or something and her ski came off. So I hiked back up to help her get her ski back on. That's the last thing I remember. The snowboarder was going so fast and probably did not um, see the girls in time to be able to turn or, or avoid them. The next thing that I heard was um, that three, three skiers were down and only one had a pulse. Another boy that was skiing came up and had brought me a helmet and it was the helmet that Elise was wearing. The framework was broken out. And it hit me at that point that I didn't think I was going to see my daughter alive again. I was guided down to another uh, uh, room where Kelly was at. And um, she was just hooked up to all these machines. Um, she was hooked up to a respirator. Kelly took a lot of the hit. She was thrown and her head hit the ground. Later on, the doctors had determined that it was actually, that the, the majority of her uh, traumatic brain injury was from hitting the snow and then her brain actually coming and hitting the other side of her skull. Her C1 vertebrae was fractured. From the bit of research that I was able to do, I just, I knew that I needed to get her to Craig. This was a profound injury. When she first came to Craig, she didn't have any day-to-day -day recall. She would ask, you know, where are the kids? And he would say, well, we're just focused on getting you better right now. And they didn't want to, they didn't want to have to tell her more than once. She still didn't quite grasp exactly what was going on, and this is exactly what the neuropsychologist was telling me, was that her, all of her emotions and everything probably aren't gonna be there all at once. 
I remember that day because it was one where she was to a point in her recovery that she had day-to-day -day recall and she she was informed about the about the, the death of her daughter. My brain had not gotten the message to my heart at that point. The only place I wanted to go outside of my room was to see Dr. Barry so that he could explain to me what had happened to me, what was going on, because it really, literally just hit all the grief and everything, and, and I didn't understand why I couldn't cry. It was an unimaginable grief, and I think it was that, the depth of that tragedy that impacted the team, every one of us. As she was dealing with the loss of Ellie and the fact that she'd suffered a traumatic brain injury, she wasn't surrounded by her friends. It was Craig. The environment, even though we were away from home, was, I think, as much like home as it could be. From the professional care to uh, having the apartments on site uh, to make it as much like a home atmosphere, and particularly in our case, for me to be able to take such good care of our children while I was caring for Kelly. I just couldn't have asked for a better situation. I was able to uh, have Kelly's mom uh, bring Millie and Logan up to the Sky Bridge, which is one of our favorite places at the hospital, was to sit and look. Millie, I think, was so excited to see her mom and didn't quite understand why mom wasn't so excited. But I did see Kelly light up at that time to see Millie. And again, her first question was, where is Elise at? So she wasn't still fully understanding what happened. I had had three kids at that point. I think that that was a, a huge component in my healing. I had those tangible people there loving me and supporting me and giving me a reason to, to recover. They were not gonna stay down. They were both gonna get up, and, and that took a process. You're doing great, babe, just focus. Craig just set the foundation for my full recovery. Kelly and Chauncey loved those people who helped them. And you don't love those people unless they, love you. they loved you. It was just uh, phenomenal how quickly I started to see my wife again. This is Kelly walking with her physical therapist and with Millie. Kelly and I have never pointed fingers at each other. We've always been there to support each other. Losing a child will either make or break a marriage. So I decided that I, this was not going to break my marriage. So since the accident, we have had two more daughters. Now we, we technically have five kids. We just recently moved from Casper, Wyoming to Thermopolis, Wyoming, which is a small town. We're currently uh, right now living at the family ranch. Slow feet, quick feet. You know, it's great for Kelly to be here because there's a lot less uh, stimuli on her and everything else, but really the ranch is a wonderful place for me to continue to heal from some of the wounds that I carry from this event. Kelly and I still uh, take our kids skiing. Still love to ski. Currently, we're working with the National Ski Areas Association to put out a safety campaign in honor of Elise. Today is the first day that we've shown this video publicly. And we've just launched the Ride Another Day campaign for the National Ski Areas Association working with Kelly and Chauncey Johnson. We have a campaign that people will be hearing about more and more called Ride Another Day. Ease up at blind spots, check uphill when merging onto trails, and give others plenty of room when passing.
this is truly an impactful story. And to have people come up to me, let alone the line of people that came up to Kelly and Chauncey afterwards, truly demonstrates to me that we're going the right direction with this. Kelly is an amazing mom. Kelly just lives and breathes her children. We always still talk about Elise, just trying to make her more real to them. Everything that Kelly does is selfless for me and for her kids. Being my wife, I admire her and think she's the best mom in the world. <laughs> hey, I like to be tough. I like to be, to push myself. You know, I just, I couldn't live my life without Kelly. I just couldn't, I feel so blessed that I have her even now.